Hey guys and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about the fundamentals of UEL subroutine in Abacus. So, why should we use the UEL subroutine in the first place? One, to work with elements that are not present in Abacus library, especially couple and cohesive elements. For example, we are doing a research concerning the pinching phenomenon on reinforced concrete members. Uh, for these kind of purposes, there are no elements that are useful for our research. Therefore, we have to write our own element. Second, to have a desired force displacement relation, mainly used for hysteretic elements. Imagine that we want to model a linked element uh, with the Bushwin behavior. This kind of behavior is not present in the library of Abacus. Therefore, we have to write our own UEL. Let's see some examples of the UEL uh, subroutine. This work is done by Dr. Martin Spaneda concerning the corrosion phenomenon. So, these kind of elements are not present in Abacus library. Therefore, in this case, a 2D element is um, generated to model the corrosion process. Next one uh, is about the concrete cracking in concrete members. Uh, we know that there are no uh, specific elements for concrete cracking in Abacus library. Therefore, a user-defined element is written for these kind of purposes. Next is about a concrete frame that is used for uh, nonlinear dynamic analysis. We know that if we want to model these kind of frames in Abacus uh, to minimize our uh, computational costs, we have to use the wire elements. So wire elements have some limitations. For example, if we want to uh, use the concentrated plasticity uh, we cannot use the wire elements because the concentrated plasticity concept is about um, concentrating the plastic parts near the joints and model the rest of the element as an elastic part so for this kind of uh, analysis we cannot use the wire elements therefore a UEL element comes in handy. Next, we want to model the shear uh, panels. Uh, we cannot use the uh, ordinary shell uh, elements because these kind of uh, elements do not um, represent the um, perfect uh, shear panels. Therefore, uh, in this concept, the combination of rigid elements and springs is used for modeling the shear panels. Uh, so these combined elements are not uh, present in Abacus library. Therefore, we have to use the user-defined elements. Some important notes. Desired elements can be coded into UEL subroutine, provided that we have the stress student relation and the uh, numerical integration process. User must uh, produce the stiffness matrix, internal forces, and other solution-dependent variables that is necessary for the analysis. And the most important note of this page is that Abacus uh, cannot directly visualize the user-defined elements. Therefore, we have to provide an INP file and a UMAT uh, subroutine to uh, visualize the user-defined elements. Um, this part is a bit tricky and we are going to talk about it in our next video. In UEL validation section, results obtained by UEL may differ from that of Abacus due to numerical errors and cutoffs. Uh, so 
Imagine that we have written a UEL for our research. First, we must validate this UEL with, uh, for example, experimental results or an element presented in Abacus library. So these uh, validations uh, might have 1% or 2% uh, errors, uh, and these kind of errors are normally generated by cutoffs and uh, numerical errors. So the main equation that we should solve for static problems is this. First is the stiffness matrix, which we must provide in UEL. And the next is displacement vector, which is uh, provided by Abacus solvers. Next is the load vector, which is generally known. And F is the internal force vector, which we must provide by the UEL subroutine. The K matrix is called the A matrix that uh, should be directly specified in UEL. And the next F is called the right hand side or RHS. If I want to be more specific, the term R minus F is the RHS. So, to obtain the internal forces RHS, we must determine the nodal stresses. But, if we want to pass the nodal stresses from one increment to another increment, we should be able to store these nodal stresses. But, Abacus does not automatically store the stresses. So, what should we do? Uh, there is an array called SVARS which is provided by the Abacus in UEL subroutine to save and store these kind of STVs. Also, uh, some useful nodal information, for example, displacements, uh, velocities, acceleration, etc. is provided by Abacus uh, in the UEL subroutine. Um, and these kind of nodal information are according to nodal numbers. For example, if my INP file contains the nodal numbering, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, then Abacus passes the nodal information according to 1, 2, 3, 4 order. Therefore, we must be cautious with the numerical integrations. If we are using other subroutines in conjunction with the UEL subroutine, for example, UMAD, USTFLD, or etc., uh, we should um, provide a common block or module to store the outputs of the UEL and mm, pass them uh, to, for example, UMAD subroutine. Uh, a little tip here. We use the UMAT subroutine to visualize the results of the UEL uh, subroutine. So, this concludes our introduction to UEL subroutine. Um, next video is going to be about the uh, programming of the UEL subroutine. If you found this video useful, please support me by liking and subscribing to my channel.